The Enormal Tomir, one of the shoes designed by Kilian Journave, which was actually made to be a workhorse, an everyday trainer. The question is, does it really live up to its expectations? Let's find out. Aloha guys, this is Nendor from Hungaro Explorer and today I'm going to talk about the Enormal Tomir, which was tested in the last two months, so it's going to be more like a long-term review. I have a couple hundred miles in it. I took it out to different kind of terrains from Spain's rocky mountainous areas to Romania's wet and muddy terrain. I even had to use it as a water shoe one day when we did this uh, traverse in a canyon and it served me well. And of course, the last test for this shoe was the Hawaiian jungle. Yes, uh, all the shoes in the Hawaiian jungle get a big test out here. Not all of them doing really good, but this shoe actually held off very good. Now, before I start talking about it in more in depth, uh, let's just go through some specs. The upper material of the Tomir, it's made of TP ripstop, which is very abrasion resistant, so it helps with the durability of the shoe. The midsole of this shoe is an EVA50 low density foam, which actually is sewn into the upper, which helps again with durability. The sole is a vibrant mega grip light base, which has 33 lugs each 5 millimeters. That definitely helps with traction on all kinds of terrain. The front stack height is 23 millimeter and the rear one is 31 millimeter, which equals to an 8 millimeter drop. The weight of the shoe in my size, which is 9 US, is actually 276 grams. Okay, let's talk about the Tomir. But before we start, you might ask why this shoe looks so dirty. Well, actually, this is what happens if you go into the muddy sections. This mud will never come out of this shoe. If you decide to get one of these and you live in places where the mud is consistent and you're gonna hike and run a lot better get the black color because this one one time it gets this dirt it's impossible to wash it out i tried believe me with everything but it doesn't come out so it makes you look a little bit more um well dirty let's talk about the design of this shoe so the design is very simple but at the same time is very different first when i thought about uh, killing journeys first shoe i was thinking it's gonna be more of a solomon style shoe but i was very surprised when i saw this one and i tried it on because it has a very loose toe box uh, not really specific to solomon but i really like that one in here the upper is made of this tpe material which is very strong and is durable it's probably the key point of this shoe durability but we get back to that in a moment the upper actually is reinforced all the way around in the front by the toes and on the bottom closer to the midsole so that makes even more durable they chose to use this uh, unilateral lacing system which is supposed to help you to better fit the shoe i don't have any pressure points which is i think that was the purpose of doing this unilateral lacing system it works but uh, i don't feel like anything special about it it just looks different it features a gusseted tongue which definitely helps keeping the dirt out of your shoe. I think the midsole of the shoe actually uh, sets this shoe apart from the Chirag because it's a very different uh, thicker midsole. But when you look at it, you might think, oh, I'm going to have a lot of cushion on this shoe, which is not really true. You have some cushion, but not too much. As you can see, it's like very stiff. And if you think that, you know, running uh, 50 miles or 100 and then it's going to soften, it actually doesn't do it the midsole is the same firm as when i started so actually what is very cool about this shoe they sew the midsole to the upper keeps it more together actually makes it way more durable i don't know why other companies don't do that that's a very good idea one of my favorite things about this shoe is the sole and the traction it has this vibrant mega grip which is in a lighter version of the usual soles and it contains 33 lugs each five millimeters which you might think it's too uh, deep to be an everyday running shoe, but actually I found it very good. Well, of course, on the trails, you don't want to run with this shoe on the concrete or on the road because it's not too comfortable. I tried it. Um, no, this made for the trails and the traction works really great on a lot of different surfaces. I hiked a lot and I ran in uh, Picos de Europa National Park, which is in Spain. It was a lot of wet and rocky terrain that traction was just really awesome. Here in Hawaii, I found it working pretty well. Yes. 
Now, the purpose of this shoe, by as Kilian Journey said, he got sick of changing his shoes um, every year. He used like 12 shoes uh, just for training and racing. And he really wanted to create a pair of shoes, or actually two pairs of shoes, one for racing and one for training. So the Tomir is the everyday training shoe. And for this purpose, he really wanted a shoe which can be durable enough to be used for long term, right? This shoe is kind of a tank of a shoe, to tell you the truth. <laughs> it can handle a lot of things. Of course, it gets scratched up, beat up, but there is no any damage to the shoe after like a couple hundred miles of terror on the trails. Beside one place, I found the the front of the shoe where the sole comes up it get a little bit unglued that happened like after 50 miles i don't know what did i do but after that it stayed like that never got worse i think this shoe is a very durable shoe it can hold you for months that's for sure depends on how much you hike or run with it now that we talked about durability materials used in this shoe traction let's talk about one of the other important factor of a trail running shoe is the fit and the comfort so it's really important that you are very comfortable while running, you have a nice fit in your shoes so you can do your best performance. Now this is the place where I feel like this shoe might need a little bit of tweaking. So when I got the shoe, I tried two different numbers, the eight and a half and the nine. Usually I wear nine in every shoes. So I thought nine would be the one and actually I got the nine by the end, but I feel like the eight and a half would have been a better choice. So a little bit smaller. This one feels a little bit too loose and I might, it might be a little bit too big on me. Actually this shoe, even with the insole, is, is pretty flat. So if you have trouble with your arches, you might want to consider an extra sole, which support your arches a little bit better. What I totally forgot to mention is the toe box of the shoe. So the toe box is pretty wide and then you have a lot of space for your foot to play around in it so it's not like a typical you know Salomon shoes which is a more narrow or a La Sportiva it's more roomy more space for your foot to expand when it needed see some reviews they say that it's still not wide I think for me it's actually very wide maybe I have a narrow foot I don't know I really like La Sportivas and Salomon so maybe maybe just for me fits the toe box fits wide but definitely wider than expected from Killian Journey's first shoe. So how about the price? Well, uh, the price is an important factor for a lot of people when they're buying a trail running shoe. And this one costs $165, which might sound a lot for a trail runner, but if you look around the market, uh, prices are getting higher and higher. And most of the shoes are over $140 range. And if you think about how durable and how long this shoe will last, Actually, I think it's really worth the price. The Tomir comes in a regular version, which is a 165, and it comes in a waterproof version, which is a $175. That's supposed to have an extra layer, and the sizing is a little bit different. So you might want to add an extra half a size or a whole size if you buy the Gort, I mean the waterproof shoe. If you think about this price for a boutique company, which just opened up and it has barely two shoes like the Chirag and the Tomir to have the price 165 I don't think so that's that high another cool thing about this company they talk a lot about sustainability they actually want you to send back this shoe after you used it for a long time and you don't need it so they can redo it and then give it to some people who they really need it which is amazing like uh, maybe other shoe companies think about stuff like that now i kind of see after using this shoe for a couple months why uh, killian journey said this is a workhorse like an everyday trainer actually you can do in this shoe everything every day because it just works for almost all kind of uh, activities besides running on the road don't try that it's not fun if you are looking for an everyday great shoe which is gonna serve you for a long time it's gonna be durable comfortable and grippy this is a good shoe for you. Well, I don't expect that you're gonna run the, as fast as Killian Journey. That's not gonna happen. I really tried, believe me, not gonna work. But <laughs> everything else that shoe has to offer, it's amazing. So I'm really happy with it for now. And let's see how it goes in a couple hundred more miles. I hope I helped you decide to buy or not to buy this shoe. 
and see you guys next time. Aloha.